Stangibilisco here to describe the characteristics and applications of a circuit known as an emitter follower. Emitter follower. That is also known as a grounded collector bipolar transistor circuit. And what we're looking at here is an NPN bipolar transistor connected in this configuration. Notice that the collector is connected directly to ground. So instead of a positive power supply, we use a negative voltage for the power supply and connect it to the emitter, thereby ensuring that with these resistors and this resistor, the NPN bipolar transistor will be biased correctly for DC so that it can operate more or less in the class A mode. Class A means that current flows through the device for the entire input cycle. The circuit that we see here is mainly intended for radio frequency applications or RF. For example, you know, 3 megahertz, 4 megahertz, uh, whatever that may be, uh, ham radio applications in particular, uh, this can be useful for. Well, what exactly does an emitter follower do? It's not really an amplifier, even though we can say that it's biased in class A. We're taking the output from the emitter, and what we're going to end up with here is an output that is in phase with the input. That's why we call this an emitter follower, but we're also going to find that the circuit doesn't really produce any gain. It's not intended to produce gain. What it's intended to do is match a high impedance input to a low impedance output. So it serves as a sort of a broad band impedance matching step down transformer for radio frequency applications. And uh, it, it works pretty well in those kinds of situations in radio receivers and other places where we might want to transform a high impedance to a low impedance. It, this circuit, by the way, can also work at audio frequencies. So if, for example, if you want to, if you have a high impedance output in a, in a radio transmitter, low power, say a QRP radio transmitter, high impedance output, but you have a, a relatively low impedance for your antenna, for example, 50 ohms pure resistance. This might be a thousand ohms, and you want this thing to work over a broad range of frequencies. You don't have to worry about the characteristics of the inductors and capacitors. You don't have to worry about tuning such a circuit if you properly design an emitter follower. But you should remember uh, this isn't going to work real well in a high power transmitter. It would work quite well in a QRP transmitter. And uh, you're not going to uh, get any gain out of this. You're going to, you may want to follow your, your little low power final amplifier with this, but you're not going to get any further amplification. This is simply an impedance matching device. It can also be useful if you have an extremely low impedance antenna, such as, for example, a small tuned loop antenna. Stangibilisco. Proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations, saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long for now.